Tonight, we want to take this time to invite each and every one of you to our live broadcast. And one of the reasons why we always inviting you is that we are too blessed to just sit without doing anything. God has blessed us so much and yet has required little. I tell you, what we are giving back to God is not even equivalent to what God continues to do. I want us lifting up our praises unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this evening. Let us worship God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We adore you tonight, Jesus. What better place to be than to be in the house of the Lord? Father, we give you the praise tonight, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we magnify your name tonight, Jesus. Come on, let us worship the Lord tonight. Lord, we bless you. Hey. Come, let us worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord, say. Let us worship the Lord. Yes. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Let us worship. Let us worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. Worship the Lord. Oh, yes. Worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the King. Worship the King. Worship the King. Say, let us worship the King. Hallelujah. Worship the King. Worship the King. Let us worship. Let us worship the King. Hallelujah. Worship the King. Worship the King. Let us worship. Let us worship the King. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus, let us pray. Come, let us worship the King, worship the King, worship the King. This is how I love to worship the Lord. Somebody, join me tonight. Let us lift up our worship to the King of Kings. Come and let us worship the King tonight. Give you my praise. 
musicians, I want you to help me worship in tonight. Let the instrument prophesy tonight. Haka yando rebo satalaba. Prophesy, O instrument. Manka yando rebo satalaba. Hey. on your feet as we bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. If you said that we believe it, hallelujah. Don't stop your worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift it up. Don't stop your worship. Don't stop your worship tonight. Come on. We bless your name, O oh God, in this room. This is our worship to you. Hallelujah. For the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yes, God. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is my light. Come on. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? One more time. The Lord is my Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Come on, I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Come on, we put our trust. I will trust in you. Right on, I will trust in you tonight. I will trust in you. Come on, let's do it again. Come on, for Lord. Come on, who shall I be a friend? I will wait on you. Come on, sing the lost one. I will wait on you. Come on, this is our pride. I will trust in you. Lift it up. I will trust in you. I will trust. I love this one. It says. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, sing. I will remain. I will remain. Confident. I will see. I will see the goodness of one more time. Come on. I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this. I will see the goodness. Come on. The Lord is mine. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? For Lord is my light. Come on. Whom shall I fear? Sin of whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Come on. I will wait on you. Follow this is our pride. I will try. Trust in you, God. I will trust in you. Ooh, I love this part. Come on. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, give the Lord some praise. We said I hope on you tonight. We said I hope on the one God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on.
Of the Lord, come on. I will remain, remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. One more time, come on. Sing, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord.
Bless the Lord, bless the Lord this beautiful Friday evening. It's a blessing to be back with you, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We want to welcome you to our regular Friday healing and deliverance service. We say thank God for you. May the Lord bless you. And may the word that's coming forth tonight be a blessing to you because the purpose of the word is to enlighten us, to strengthen us, enable us to do the things God has called us to do. And that's why the Bible is called the word of faith. And faith enables us to trust God, to believe God uh, for who he says he is and the things he says we are capable of doing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the privilege we have, O oh God, in you. That we can serve you, O oh God, because we've received the spirit of adoption. That we're now children, sons and daughters of God. We come before you with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise tonight, O oh God. We say thank you for being so good to us. We pray, Lord, that as your word comes forth tonight, we'll all be doers of the word and not hear us only. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Bless God. We want to bless God for the wonderful praise and worship. We bless God for his anointing upon the worship team. May God continue to bless them and increase them as they continue to play their role as worshipers in his house. Tonight, as usual, we're going to be encouraging your faith because we're in turbulent times. We're in perilous times. We're in a time where the Bible tells us that it's not going to get better. But God speaking to the prophet Daniel, he says, only those who know their God in these days and this time of this, uh, this uh, millennium will be strong and do exploit. Only those who know God will be able to survive the times in which we are living. Because wickedness has, you know, increased. The enemy has upped his game because he knows his time is short on this earth. He knows that any moment the trumpet will sound. And once the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise first, and Paul says, those of us who will be alive, if we will be alive, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Satan knows when that happens, then he has only seven years to live free. And so he knows that the sign Jesus gave in the word of God are all over the place. You know, there's an old song we used to sing. It says, signs of the time are everywhere. And there's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes upon the eastern star. Lift up your head. Redemption draws nigh. Truly, redemption is drawing nigh. Nobody, Jesus says, know the day or the hour when he will come back. Even he says the angels do not know that except the Father. And the day the Father says to the Son, go, Son, and harvest my you know, uh, crops because it is ready. Speaking figuratively about the church, we know that then we will then know the time that, hey, the Bible already says it in the book of Revelation and other places, that it's going to be seven years of tribulation. After that, the world will come to an end finally. And so the thing here is we look for the signs. And the devil is not a fool. He knows the Bible very well, and he knows the signs are all written everywhere on the walls, you know, so to speak, in the heavenlies. They're happening in the earth, and so he's watching, and he's panicking also because he knows. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 25, 41, hell was prepared as a place of punishment for Satan and the angels that rebelled with him. Satan knows that very well, that he's going to go to hell. And not only him, but every rebellious angel that chose to rebel against God, you know, when they were free in heaven to serve God faithfully. Sad to say, humans also will go to hell because of the decisions they make in this world. That's why God has given us his word so that the word will help us make the right decisions so as to avoid hell or rather go to heaven. And now we're going to focus on the times in which we are, as I said earlier, that we're in the end times. And things are not going to get better. We're not going to go back to the days we used to buy gasoline, 85 cents, 75 cents. I met a man a couple of years ago in Massachusetts who told me, son, we met at the gas station and we began to converse. He was a very old man. 
And he says, son, you know, when I started driving, gas was 35 cents. 35 cents. How much is gasoline? And I believe if you had told that man that, you know, several years from now, gasoline would be, you know, over $4 in some states, he would have laughed at you. But this is the reality. We're not going to go back to those days. I remember when I was little, we used to buy bread, five cents. Then it went to six cents, then seven cents, you know, and on and on and on. Times are not going to go back to where it used to be. Stop keeping yourself in a nostalgic moment. Come into reality and accept the word of God that already warned us ahead of time that things are going to get tougher. You know, wickedness is going to be on the rise. Paul says this. You know, the other apostle talks about that. Jesus himself talked about it. He says the love of many will wax cold. Men will become lovers of themselves, proud, boastful, you know, and, and not wanting to obey the rules. They will be lawbreakers and, and selfish and they will only care about themselves. And you see all of these things happening in the world today. Jesus said, when you see these things happening, it's not the end, but know that the end is near. And so being inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul won the church. I want to talk a little bit about that to encourage your faith before we let you go. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, while you hold on to Hebrews chapter 11, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, this is what the Apostle Paul says, beginning with verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, in this day and age we live, you have to learn to be satisfied with what God has blessed you with. And don't want to be somebody else. Don't wish you were somebody because they got money. Don't wish you were associated or familiar or related to somebody all because they got money. All to life is not money. But if you don't know the word of God, that's when you will think that all to life is money. So here the Bible is warning us that godliness with contentment. In other words, be happy, be satisfied with what God has blessed you with. Live right in the eyes of God because it will help you in the end. He says, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Many people don't know the scripture, so they do not know these things are written in the word of God. That God is telling us, look, the material things you're chasing out there till you don't want to give God any place in your life. You don't want to respect the things of God. You don't want to acknowledge God in your life. You think all to life is your goals, your accomplishments, what you wish to do in this world till God is placed on a back burner. God is, is nowhere in your life. And so God is saying to us, look, all the things you're chasing, you did not bring them in the world and you're not going to take them with you even if you think you, you achieve them and acquire them. Nowhere you see in the world the hearse is taking even the person's money with them. Uh, someone dies, they don't take, withdraw their money from the bank and put it in the casket and say, go with it. Or their belongings, their homes, whatever. God is true in his word. He says, look, in fact, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Paul is concurring with himself here <laughs> as he wrote to his son Timothy that, look, we came into this world with nothing and we will leave with nothing. So he says, godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, be happy with what God has blessed you with because all to life is not money and the cares of this world, material things, only mansions, expensive cars. God is not against us getting rich, but God is concerned how we acquire these riches and how we relate to them. Are they controlling us? Are the riches uh, causing our decisions that we're making? And because of that, our decisions are contrary to the word of God. If you are in that you know, situation, then you're in trouble. Also, he says, in having food and raven, let us be there with content. Be happy with what God has blessed you with. Because he says in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, Paul continues to say, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 
Paul is saying because of the love of, men, of money, many people have shipwrecked their faith. Many people have gone back to the world because the thing, uh, you know, God is, is kind of prohibiting them from getting what they want to get. And sometimes the devil is very tricky. He would tempt you. He would tempt you with money that's illegal or gotten illegally. You will have to say no because it's not right in God's eyes to obtain anything illegally. But then the devil will say, look at you. This is a one in a lifetime opportunity. It's not going to come your way again. You can grab it and ask God to forgive you. God is merciful. You know that. But most Christians don't understand, in fact, that the devil do speak. You know, the devil speaks. And so because of that, they think, well, it is themselves that's talking. So they go ahead and disobey God with the hope that, oh, I will ask God to forgive me. James 4, 17 says, he that know what to do good and does it not unto him, it is sin. In other words, you knew what you were doing is wrong, and yet you did it because you think you want to ride on the mercy of God, the grace of God. Paul speaking in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 1, he says, should we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we who have been free go back into sin? You can't continue to sin against God. And so this brings us to Hebrews chapter number 11. I want to talk to you about Moses because Moses faced similar temptation. Moses was brought up in the palace of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the greatest nation on the face of the earth during Moses' days. It was God's divine providence that brought Moses, first of all, into that palace. We all know that how the law was passed, every male child of every Israelite woman should be executed, and Moses' parents kept him. Uh, they did their best, but then when they realized that they could no longer keep it up, they trusted God and let go of him. And God's plan for Moses continued, and God led Moses to Pharaoh's daughter who was you know, uh, showering in the river Nile on the banks of the river, and she had pity, had compassion on the child. Who touched her heart? It was God, because God had a plan for Moses. And so she raised the child, and God in his mercy, uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, Yaquibed, Moses' mother, told Miriam, his older sister, to follow the basket and make sure she saw what became of it, because they wanted to know the end of the story. You don't just, they didn't just want to leave the child on the river now, and then they didn't know what became of him, whether he survived or what. So Miriam obeyed her mother. It's important, you know, most of us, when our parents tell us stuff to do stuff, we overlook it, oh, they old man, man, oh, they old man, man, and we just downplay that and we don't obey. What if Miriam had not obeyed? She would not have known, and then God's plan for Moses would have been, you know, uh, uh, disrupted in a while. But you see, God is almighty and all-powerful. The thing about it is that when you, when you don't obey God, you will miss out on what God has for you. But God's plan will never be aborted. God will always make a way. He's the provider. He is the almighty, all-sufficient God. So if Marion had not obeyed her mother, God would have stayed made a way because he led the basket, saved the basket from all the crocodiles and, and, and things that were in the night. They could have snatched that basket and ate the child. But God shut the mouth of those alligators and crocodiles so that the basket will reach its destination, which was to the bank of the Nile where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. And God prearranged it because he is almighty. That's why we trust him. Though we may not understand some of the things that God allows to happen to us, but one thing we are confident of is that Paul says in Philippians 1.6, God who has begun this good work in us is able to finish it. God who called you, God who saved you, God who caused you to be conceived in your mother's womb, God is able to take care of you and he took care of you while you were an embryo. He delivered you from miscarriage, from, from all the, the pre-natal you know, diseases and when you got, you got delivered, God still kept you from childhood diseases and you remember other kids died from measles, polio, and you name it, uh, um, MMR, chicken pox, and yet God in his mercy protected you. You went to school, got an education, now you are who you are, and then you say you have no need for God. It is what God describes in the book of Ezekiel. He said, you were like a child that was abandoned by the mother, left in the open field to die. You know, infants are vulnerable. 
if they do not have caring people around them, they will die. Infants depend on the adults that are around them to take care of them. And so God said, I took you, watched you, cleaned you, took care of you. Now you have grown, and now you say you don't want to be with me. Now you say you're disrespecting me. God was speaking to the people of Israel, and that applies to us today. But we thank God Miriam followed that basket so that she could see. And because of her obedience, you see, every time we obey God, it makes it easier for the plan of God to come to pass in our lives. Miriam would have missed out. But because she obeyed her mother, she followed the basket. And the basket went and landed on the uh, banks of the river Nile. And Pharaoh's daughter heard the child crying in the basket. And she went and opened it after her seven were instructed to bring the basket. She said, no, I know this is a Hebrew child. Now she could have said, get rid of it. But you see, because God had a plan for Moses' life, just how God has a plan for your life. It's not over until God says it's over and God would never say say it's over for you because he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Trials will come, temptation will come, persecution will come, but God is your source. God is our protector. The Bible says he's our very present help in times of trouble. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. The scripture also says the angels of the Lord are in camp round about them that fear him. God has given us his word. He will never break his covenant. Psalm 84, 19, he says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the thing that I've gone out of my lips concerning you. God has spoken concerning you. He will be with you. He who started his good work in you, he will finish it. Just as he showed himself faithful, faithful to Amram and Yochebed, Moses' parents. Because of their faithfulness, God stepped in. God favored the child. You see, that's what favor is. God touching people's heart who are in the position to like you and to honor what you want done. That can only come from God. You see, the Bible says again in the book of Proverbs, the heart of man is in God's hand. He can touch anybody's heart to favor you, to be a blessing to you. So seek God. When you seek God, who is the blessor, the blessings will come. No matter from which source, no matter from where, no matter when, it will come because God never fails those who trust in him. I would say those who trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion that cannot be removed but abided forever. And as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. Pharaoh's daughter could have said, get rid of it. But because God had already stirred her heart, just like God would stir people who are in the position to help you, he would stir the heart to favor you because you are a child of God. People of God, not everything in this world you can work for. You can't earn everything. The favor of God will cause you to get some things that you cannot afford. That's why it is called the favor of God. God will touch those who already have it to be a blessing to you. Or not only will they give you stuff, but they will will open doors for you. Say, go there, do that, do this, and this will happen. They already know what to do, and they will show you what to do also because of the favor of God that's upon your life. Oh, people of God, Pharaoh's daughter said, who, how can we take her? Not that she didn't have the means. Look, when God is in something, he suspends the normal way it works. That's why we call it miracle. A miracle is an unusual event taking place in your life. Something abnormal taking place in your life for your good now, not for evil. What's supposed to happen normally or what had happened normally to others and it did not work, nothing amounted or came out of it, for you, God will turn it around and will work in your favor because of the favor of God that's upon her life. No wonder David says in the book of Psalm 5, let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous and with favor You will come past him or her as with a shield. You see, but it starts with you loving God with all your heart, serving God with all your heart. Then God says his favor will overtake you. He will bring people your way to help you, to be a blessing to you. And that's exactly what happened because Yochebed and Amram, the parents of Moses, 
were faithful servants of God. So God said, I will not let what happened to the other Israelites happen to you. People of God, you are special. Remember we talk about you are God's peculiar people. You are his royal priesthood. You are his holy nation. You are his chosen generation. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus on the good works. Before this foundation of the world was laid, God predestined us. God had us in mind. He had a plan and a purpose in mind for our lives. God will bring his word to pass. That's why we need to cooperate with God to see the plan of God come to pass in our lives. Isaiah 1, he says, if you're willing and obedient, then you will eat the fruit of the land. You will be blessed. God will open doors for you if you will obey him. That's the key. Obedience to the Lord. Because Amram and Yochebed trusted God, they could have said, well, every other child is being killed, so ours is no exception. But you see, faith will cause you to do the unusual, will cause you to step out and trust God to do something spectacular in your life, something phenomenal in your life that's called a miracle. What others cannot get, God will give it to you because you are a faithful child of God. People of God, then Marion came out of nowhere. She could have also said, who are you? You are nothing but a Hebrew slave. Get out of here. But Marion came, do you want me to find a nurse? And what did she say? Yes, do that. It must be God. It must be God, people of God. That's what God does. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle working God. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to his power that works in us, people of God. He's able to blow your mind. He's able to surprise you with wonders. No wonder again we sing, wonder, wonder, so, so wonder Jesus they do for me. Wonder, wonder, wonder Jesus they do for me. Every day is a wonder. Every day is a wonder, wonder, wonder. So, so wonder Jesus is doing for me. So, so wonder, miracles upon miracles, doors being opened. Why? Because your faith in God is being rewarded. Those who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. That's what the Bible says. Yochebed and Amram trusted God. And so God stepped up for them. And he's still in the business of stepping up for his children. Hebrews 13, it says he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for the parents of Moses, he's still doing for his children today. All God needs is our faith, our trust in him. People of God, God wants to bless us. God, the Bible says, has good plans for us. Plans that are intended to prosper us and give us an expected end. But God needs our cooperation. You have to learn to respect God. Honor the things of God and you will see God honoring you before man. And people will begin to ask how it happened. How did you get that? How did you get this job? How did you enter into that college? How did you get this money? How did you get this blessing? I thought the doctor said you couldn't have children. How come you got pregnant? How did it happen? All because you've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. All because you've decided to put your faith in the Lord. For those who put their faith in God will never be disappointed. No matter how long it takes, God will show up for you, people of God. Be patient. David said, wait patiently for the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. People of God, she said to Miriam, go bring the nurse. And guess what? Miriam went and brought the child's own mother. Do you see how God can work? Yes. Look, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ever ask or think. Why the other Israelite women, children were killed, here, your child is not being killed. Then you're about to get paid for taking care of your own child. You want to say God is not in the miracle working business? I beg to defer. God is able. He's still in the miracle working business. He can do what he says he will do. He has never changed. And we trust him with all of our hearts. That's why we're here to encourage you to trust God. Because God is still doing miracles today. He hasn't changed. And he will never change. He will never change. People of God, that's why we see in the book of Hebrews 
chapter number 6. The Bible says in verse 24, Hebrews 11, 24 rather. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Do you see that? After God brought him and carried out his plans, God Moses educated physically, mentally, to prepare him at least to know how to read and write and to know, understand the culture. But because he was raised by his mother, he was told who he really was. And so when Moses became of age, Moses knew that he was an Israelite and not an Egyptian. And so when the time came for him to make the decision, just like most of us, every one of us in this world, we will all go down in that valley of decision according to the book of Ezekiel. Decision, decision, in the valley of decision. You will have to make up that decision whether to serve God with all your heart or to turn your back. You will have to make up your mind to choose God or to choose the world. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow my Savior. No turning back, no turning back. You can have the whole world, but I'll take Jesus. You can have this whole world, but I'll take Jesus. You can have this whole world, but just give me Jesus. No turning back, no, no turning back. Moses made up his mind. He says, I have been taught right. I will not allow the cares of this world to pull me from my calling. Remember we read in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says it is because of all of these material things, the loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, and the pride of life, as John speaks about it in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. He says these are the things that can cause shipwreck in people's lives. Ministers of the gospel have made shipwreck of their ministry because of the love of the things of this world. Moses was placed in that same position. Every one of us will be placed in that position to make up our minds, to make the decision whether we will serve God or we will choose the cares of this world. God says to the children of Israel, I've placed before you life and death. Choose life. Choose life so that you can live, you can be blessed. And all to life is not money. All to life is not material stuff because they will all pass away. We came into this world with nothing and we will leave out of here with nothing. But what will last is your decision to serve God. Moses refused because he knew if I choose to go the Egyptian way, the whole purpose of God bringing me here will be defeated. And you see, one thing you need to realize is that God is the greatest human resource manager. He never runs out of human resource. If you blunder, if you choose to allow yourself to be carried away by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, God will find somebody else who will carry on that assignment. And you will regret forever when you find yourself in hell. And so choose God. Choose the things of God. God promised us he would bless us in this world. So why are you worrying? Why are you panicking? Why are you letting the devil to pressurize you? Oh, you're getting old. Your, your age not on the calendar anymore. No man would say they love you. So you better settle for that bum on the log. Don't do it. Don't settle for anything. You're not cheap. You are God's peculiar people. You are God's holy nation. You are God's chosen generation. You are his workmanship. He took his time to make you. God has something better in store for you. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be of good courage. God will bring to pass your heart desire that's in line with his word. Because if you settle for the less, you will regret. But it will be too late. Moses could have set up for the best. We could have read about King Moses, the Hebrew who became an Egyptian king. But that's all we would have read about him, and he would have been in hell. If only I had known, oh God. But Moses, knowing the truth, he decided to stay with the truth. And that's what most of us need to be doing here. Stay with the truth. And don't bury the truth because you think if you take the truth, you will not get rich. Can't you see you came into this world with nothing and you will leave with nothing? Therefore, godliness with contentment is great gain. 
Once I can have my needs met, I thank God for that. I don't have to be a millionaire. I thank God because even Paul warned, he said, many rich people have problems going to heaven. Jesus himself talked about that because most of them allow the riches to control them. And so Moses, like any one of us, was faced with similar decision, and he made the right decision. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and he walked away. You know the story. Went to try to help one of the Israelites, and trouble came. He had to run away. And God designed that so he could go now for phase two of the training. Now he was educated mentally. He understood, you know, everything about, you know, the physical life but he did not understand the spiritual side of it. So God had to send him away to the land of Midian for another 40 years. Can you imagine Moses was 40 years old when it was time for him to become king, to succeed the king, because then he was the oldest son, according to the tradition. The king also, because that was the king's daughter, so the king took him as his own son. So he was the successor. He was the crown prince, one step away from becoming a king. But what shall it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Moses said, I'm not going to do that. And listen to what the writer of the book of Hebrews says, which I believe is Paul. You know, most preachers are still debating this. But if you look at the message at the end of the book, the parchment, the cloak I left, bring with you. Who would give that instruction? Only Paul. He says... Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. You see, the pleasure of this world is for a season. It's not going to be eternal. It's not eternal. But it looks so enjoyable and so sweet. That's what makes it enticing and tempting. But again, Mark 8, 36, what shall it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Rather, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven twenty six, 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 28 says, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying to do, were drowned. Everything the Bible said Moses did here was done by faith. What is faith? Faith is simply believing God for who he says he is and the things he says he can do for you because he is God Almighty. That's all. Faith is simply trusting God and not doubting his Word. People of God, Moses believed what his mother told him. You are a Hebrew. And God said there would be a deliverer. I believe, Moses, you're that child. So don't settle. Look at your people. God will use you. Moses took to his mother's word. Some of us are raised in Christian homes, but see how we're living today. It's as if we never heard the word of God before because we allow the enemy to use the cares of this world to pull us away from God. People of God, Moses, the Bible says, refused the cares of this world. He refused because he knew he was the called, the chosen one. He just didn't know how it was going to happen, but he sensed it in his spirit, man. And so he stepped out there to try to help. What did he do? The first thing, he killed the Egyptian for beating the Israeli slave. He didn't know people saw it, even though he hit the body. The next day he goes out, he sees two Israelites fighting. He said, what's wrong with you? Aren't you brothers? And what a cheek the other guy gave him. You were, you, who made you judge over us? You want to kill me like you killed the Israelite? Then Moses knew he was in trouble because you dare not kill an Egyptian tax master. It was, it was punishable by death. So he had to run away. And that's when he stayed in the land of Midian for over 40 years. God taught him patience. Most of us, that's the patience we lack. That's why we're messing up ourselves. Oh, God spoke to me. Yeah, I'm a prophet. I heard the word of God say, I'm an apostle called to the nations. Really? Let's see. Because faith can be seen. 
And the book of Mark chapter 2 say, those guys that brought their brother to Jesus, their friend to Jesus, in this, on the stretch of those four guys, the Bible said, when Jesus saw their faith, how can you see faith? By actions, what is being done. Not only in words, but action. When God speaks, God honors his word. So when the time was right, God knew Moses now had gotten rid of all his ego. He had, he had just been broken completely. Then God said, it's my time now. That day, the burning bush appeared. God said, come up here. Take off your shoes because the place you're standing is holy ground. I'm sending you back now to go do what I've called you to do. People of God, God has a plan for your life. The God who did it for Moses and with Moses and through Moses is still here today to do it with you, for you and through you. All you have to do is to trust him. God is not done with you. Don't let the devil mess with your mind. Oh, look at you, it's over now. Since you've been believing God. Moses waited 40 extra years because he was 40 years old when he ran away. God added another 40 before God said to him, okay, go back to Egypt now. Can you imagine that? Moses was 80 when he went back to Egypt. Then another 40 leading the children across the desert, across the Red Sea, so he died at age 120. 40, 40, 40. You want to say a man of patience? That's why the Bible says nobody was as meek as Moses. Very patient. People of God, it is good to patiently wait on the Lord. God knows you're there. He knows, he knows you, you are there. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. God knows you're there. He knows your address. He knows exactly what you need. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait. God will show up for you. Just do your side of the agreement. That is to stay faithful. Because God promised to the faithful, he will show himself faithful. And the rest of the story is there. God used Moses mightily. He delivered the people and led them to the promised land. God is still in the business of using those who will put their trust in him. It's not over. Don't let the devil use people to talk you out of the plan of God for your life. Let them laugh. Let them do whatever and say whatever. Those are all tricks of the devil. Don't pay attention to it. Keep your focus. Set your face as a flame. Keep your eyes upon Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith. He who started this good work in you is able to finish it. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord. Your word encourages us, Lord, that you who began this good work in us, you are able to finish it. Father, we thank you, Lord. We continue to look up to you because you never let us down. You who did it for Moses, you can do it for us. You did it, O oh God, for Yaqubed and Amram, you can do it for us as well. Lord, you never change. We trust you with all of our hearts. I pray for those who are feeling discouraged tonight, oh God. Those who are asking you, Lord, when, how long? I've been praying to you for this. When will my answer come? Father, I pray that you will strengthen their hearts this evening to continue to wait on you, oh God, because you say it is good that a man should, should both hope and wait on the Lord, oh God. We pray that you will give them patience to wait because your timing is the best timing. Father, I pray for those who are sick tonight, I curse every sickness, every disease. I command it to die and wither out of the bodies of the people of God tonight. In the name of Jesus, I break every curse from over your life. Generational curse, parental curse, self-inflicted curse, witchcraft. Oh God, talisman, bewitchment, incantations, divinations, enchantment. I destroy them tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn them for our God is a consuming fire. Father, I pray that you will liberate your people tonight. Set them free, O oh God. Minister to their hearts to continue to trust you because you're never late. You are always on time. You've done it for us. We are witnesses and testimonials of the fact that you are able, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Moses we've just studied. You did it for Moses. You're still doing it for us because Hebrews 13 is, tells us that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, O oh God, for doing it for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you till we meet again on Sunday morning, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. May the Lord be with you. This is Pastor Cooper saying, go with the peace of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.